the slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness if you want how to increase stamina for marathon training is definitely uh, a long-term process okay I want you all to keep in mind that it, it takes about a month to just to adapt to running about three miles at your anaerobic threshold effort so you know in terms of marathon training and building that stamina that you need in order to to run a great time usually takes several years to get to that point okay and, and I always tell runners it's a better process uh, a better plan of action if you're training your buildup is between 20 and 24 weeks if you're training for a marathon and you're trying to build that stamina then trying to do it in four to eight weeks or even 12 weeks the longer your buildup the more time that you're you're preparing your body to do something that is extremely difficult in and of itself okay if you're trying to run at marathon pace for 26.2 miles or 42.2 kilometers to build that stamina you have to be training at paces that are down toward your 3k to half marathon race pace okay you want to get that marathon race pace to feel easier for you so it's not just running long slow easy distance runs every single weekend like I talk about it's about mixing up those paces if you're if you're doing uh, say a 24 mile long run spend about 50 to 60 percent of that long run running at maybe your your 10k race pace or half marathon race pace spend some time running bits and pieces of that long run even at like 5k race pace okay um, a mixture of running at vo2 max anaerobic threshold effort and running relaxed during a long run will help build that stamina because again you're not just running slow the entire way but also that being said I want to make sure that you also know you also do want to run long slow and easy so you build that endurance as well the stamina comes into place and that strength comes in when you're doing six times 1600 meter reps on the track and say you're running a you're aiming to break a three hour marathon if you're doing six times 1600 meters at say between 557 to 610 per rep giving yourself between two and three minutes of recovery that's going to definitely build some stamina because you're running it significantly faster than sub three hour marathon race pace um, doing longer intervals on the roads maybe like three to four 5k reps on the roads at half marathon race pace okay with maybe five minutes of recovery between each one of those 5k reps that will also help you build that stamina as well um, and it's a it's not it's a it's a process that definitely takes time as I mentioned before it took me several years to, to run a 219 for the marathon okay I started off in my debut at the 2002 New York City Marathon running 243.36 okay so to go from 243.36 to 219.35 took me five years of running but what a lot of runners don't see is I was run I started running in 1992 so it took me from 1992 really until 2007 to run 219.35 okay remember I started off running 1600 meters as a high school freshman in 530 okay so it's progression okay it's it's believing what you're doing staying consistent with your training okay you know and as a high schooler I went from 530 from to 1600 my, my freshman year down to 509 by the end of the year went to 438 uh, my sophomore year 432 my junior year 425 my senior year that's a progression okay it's not something that happens quickly when I was in college I ran a 113 for the half marathon so going from 113 as a collegiate athlete for the half marathon to a 219 for a full marathon that's a massive amount of jump so it took several years to build that stamina to get to that point where I could break the two hour and 20 minute marathon barrier okay I didn't have a great deal of talent so what I had was my work ethic what I had was a relentless pursuit of excellence over a long period of time I knew what I was trying to do was more than likely going to take me over a decade to achieve are you willing to put in that type of work okay so to build that stamina for marathon training you have to be doing a combination of very hard anaerobic work very relaxed jogging so that you recover from the hard training you're doing over a long period of time and that you don't and so that you don't lose enthusiasm okay again you're paying attention and you start paying attention to the things that 
world-class runners, athletes that are working smarter, focus on. If you're feeling fatigued and you're feeling that way over a long period of time, get a blood test. Find out what your ferritin level is. If it's below 30 nanograms, you, you need to make sure that you start either uh, iron supplementation uh, or start eating more protein, more iron in your diet. Dr. Joe Vigil uh, brought this up in one of his presentations. He said if you're running under 30 nanograms, if your ferritin levels are under 30 nanograms, you're not going to perform at a very high level at all, regardless of how much potential, how much motivation you have. Because the oxygen, uh, because your cells' capability of delivering oxygen throughout the body is not simply not there. So. What happened for me is I was running very fatigued. Uh, in 2007, I got a blood test, found out my nan my score was 21 nanograms, uh, my ferritin level. So I started taking supplement uh, iron supplements once per day. Dr. Vigil says to take a teaspoon of ferrosol, which is liquid iron, mix that in with a eight ounce glass of orange juice and take 250 milligram tablet of vitamin C. Do that daily for about a month to a month and a half and you'll get your op, your ferritin levels back up. Once I got my ferritin levels up to 87 from 21, I started hitting new personal best. Um, I wish I would have known about that when I was in high school and college when I was more than likely anemic. Okay, 21 nanograms for a ferritin level is for a male is borderline anemic. Okay, I was extremely fatigued and, and that was the reason why. So building stamina for marathon training is also paying attention to the other little details. Other examples, uh, running, doing repeat 200s, repeat 300s, repeat 100s on the track. Okay, I like doing 10 to 20 100 meters all out with full recovery. Okay, you're building those fast twitch muscle fibers and you're, you're, you're forced to pump your arms more, pump, lower, you know, lift your knees. Just like doing hill repetitions or running over hillier terrain, running over hillier terrain is more is much like doing strength training. Okay, you don't necessarily even have to do strength training if you're running hills on a on a regular basis. It's forcing you to work muscle groups that you're simply not going to be using when you're running over flat surfaces. So you build stamina that way for marathon training. Definitely when you're running over hillier terrain. Um, and definitely train on the hills even if you're going to run a flat marathon. Think of how much easier racing a marathon is going to be if you're training over hillier terrain. If you're in a location where there's a lot of hills, take that as a, an advantage on your part because, again, you're training on terrain that maybe athletes that are in Kansas or in, other, or in, or in the Netherlands in Europe where there's not a lot of hills. It's just a lot of flat terrain you have a huge advantage over those those athletes as well. Um, if you're training at altitude, you're at an advantage versus somebody that's running at that sea level. It's not a guarantee because sometimes we can do everything correctly. Sometimes you, you can be training at 6,000, 10,000 feet and still get run out and still get beat by athletes that are, are training and living at sea level. Sometimes you can do everything right in training and it still doesn't go 100% correctly for you in the race. The key thing is, is to stay consistent. Be relentless in what you're doing and you're going to build that stamina over a long period of time. I always tell athletes, if, it's, if you're training for like a 10K, a half marathon, marathon, ultra marathon, focus on a 20 to 24 week buildup. Okay? That longer buildup is going to provide ample time for you to adapt to what you're doing. You're not going to be in a rush. Um, the likelihood of you um, not being fatigued and being stressed out because you're trying to stress the, the energy systems of your, of your body in a very short amount of time is simply not there. You're providing more time. Um, that is very, very important when it comes to um, answering this question of how to increase stamina for marathon training. Okay, it's you also build that stamina by building that endurance as well. Okay, you do want to build, spend a long period of time. You know, I like doing those those long runs between like 20 to 25 miles in length, where I'm just running relaxed because again, you're you're building endurance, but also you're going to build stamina in, at the same time, because again, you're you're getting in better shape. Okay, it's one thing. To, to go out and run 10, 5 to 10 miles in early stages of your buildup, but it's another thing to double that or to go even further than 20 miles or further than 32 kilometers for your long run. It takes a long period of time to get to that point. Um, 
but running at paces that are down toward 3k to 5k race pace like at your your via 2 max effort um, running around 95 to 100 percent of your max heart rate doing that once per week uh, doing longer intervals like I mentioned uh, or doing like fartlek workouts I like uh, other types of workouts I like doing is like 20 to 25 45 second reps uh, with equal recovery between each one of those reps so you're running when you're running 45 seconds that might be running around 5k race pace then going very relaxed easy 45 second jog then back into your next hard 45 second rep and doing that 20 to 25 times Okay, again, building stamina takes time. It might be doing that that same type of workout, maybe five to six reps in the early stages, okay? Or maybe doing 10 times one minute hard followed by one minute easy, doing that in the early buildup, in your early buildup, and then working to around 20 to 30 one minute reps as you get fitter and you become more anaerobically fit, okay? So I hope this video in terms of how to build stamina for marathon training is helpful. Um, again, it's a long-term vision. It's a long-term process. It's, it's not something that happens quickly or overnight. Um, the key thing is to find your why. Find out what it is you're wanting to do and how long are you willing to put in the work in order to, to do that. Okay, marathon. It, the marathon event definitely is a, um, it's a different type of, of race compared to uh, if you're training for a 1500 or a 5k. I know I me. Mean, I know world-class runners that are much stronger. I know I know great runners that are much stronger in the longer distance than they are in the shorter distances. Runners that that aren't very fast at 5K, but they can run a very strong marathon, and vice versa. I know runners that are not very good at the marathon, but can run very very fast at 5K. Okay, so find out what your strength is, and also continue in terms of building that stamina. Continue to try to lower your times in the shorter races, the 5K, the 1500, the 10,000. The 10 mile distance get those race times down even further that's going to help get that goal marathon race pace that you have in mind to feel easier and for you to hold that pace for a longer period of time so i hope this video is helpful for you all feel free to leave me a comment below let me know what's on your mind if you have any other questions any other topics you'd like me to cover in future videos uh, i will definitely do that and definitely check out the resources on rundreamachieve.com there are a lot of different um, assets on that that particular website that are going to help get you to the next level in your training. And I wish you guys and girls all the very best in your training and I'll talk to you all in the next video.